Hello my dears, today I'm going to attempt to answer the oft-asked question. Why do we label? Before we can try to answer that, we need to understand how we label, so it's time to bring back our old friend and hot mess that is the DSM, the official diagnostic manual used in the US to diagnose mental and neurodevelopmental disorders. It was originally created as a way to try and reliably diagnose conditions since during World War II when people were trying to enlist, every medical board had different criteria for who to exclude from the military for psychiatric reasons. They wanted to standardize everything to make diagnoses more reliable between doctors. When the official DSM came out, despite being made as a general guide for professionals to work off of, it was marketed as being a precise manual that solved the reliability problem. And this made it become the gold standard in mental health care, with insurance companies and pharmacies building their policies around it. But it's important to note that it still isn't that reliable. Psychologists and psychiatrists tend to diagnose one or two specific conditions more than any others. Nearly every single clinician that I've been to has given me a different diagnosis. It's all subjective based on what a professional is used to seeing and used to looking for. The biggest criticism of the DSM, other than how unreliable it is, is how it pathologizes everything. There's a disorder for everything and they seem to be getting more and more common. I'm sure by now you've all heard of the term special snowflake as a reference to people in younger generations being too needy and crying for attention and having too many diagnoses. And there's been a lot of media coverage about how levels of anxiety and depression as well as autism and ADHD are on the rise. And while that is true, these things have always been around these numbers. They aren't new in any way. The only thing that's changed is the prevalence of people who are seeking help. And this brings us back around to the fact that the medical system as a whole is also a hot mess. If a person goes to therapy, they are typically going because of some sort of distress. Whether they define it as stress or whether their mother defines it as a stress is a different story, but our mental health system is set up for this to be the usual case scenario. And insurance companies only cover this care, as well as the medications that are sometimes part of this care, if there is some kind of diagnosis to go with it which essentially means psychologists and psychiatrists rely on the DSM to make sure that their patients can come back to receive treatment for whatever distress that they are experiencing. So as a society, the only way people can get help is to pathologize what is causing them distress. But that doesn't explain the whole story of why we label because it leaves out the idea of self-diagnosis. And self-diagnosis is a bit of a slippery slope. When it comes down to it, a diagnosis given by a doctor is ideal. But as we all know, the medical and diagnostic system is a mess, so the ideal is not often the case. There's a bit of a cultural assumption that people like to gather diagnoses to use as cop-outs for things that they don't want to do and to garner attention, and some people do that. They read one article about a disorder, declare that they have it, and go around using it as an excuse. But it's not the majority of the cases, especially when it comes to gate-kept diagnoses such as autism. Most of the time, it's people doing extensive research and questioning, and it's not because they want pity or excuses, it's because they want to understand themselves. And that brings in the question of why. Why do we like labels so much? And on a general level, it's because we like being part of a group and feeling included. As humans, we label everything. Hair color, eye color, star sign, gender, sexuality, race, personality traits, etc. And people use these descriptors as ways to understand themselves and to be proud of who they are and be the best them. As much as I don't like equating this with sexuality, it is kind of the best way that I've been able to describe it to people. For many people growing up gay, you know for a while that something is different, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Until one day you learn about what being gay is and you start to think. And it continues to sit in your mind until it's about 2am on a Wednesday and you're taking every single am I gay quiz you can find on the internet after reading several articles and watching a bunch of YouTube videos. You always knew you were gay, you always were gay, you just didn't have the words or the understanding to describe it. Now that you know more about who you are as a person, you have a community of people like you that share your experiences. You get advice from other people on how to deal with stigma and hatred and misunderstandings. You learn how to live with this piece of yourself, both the bad and the good. Yes, there will always be people pretending to be gay or bi for publicity and whatnot, but that is a very small percentage of the people with this label. For everyone else, it's like finally being able to breathe. With autism, for me, it was the same thing. I always knew I was different, but I thought I was weird and broken and defective. And then one day I started to connect the dots and do all the research, and I began to finally understand pieces of myself. Once I accepted this label, I suddenly had a new community that understood my experience and had advice on how to best deal with my struggles. I was suddenly able to get the accommodations I needed and avoid situations that were unhealthy for me. 
And I know that there's a lot of argument and discussion about how people shouldn't define themselves by their diagnoses, but every single part of my life is touched by my autism. Every single piece of who I am is autistic. Without it, I don't know who I would be, so why wouldn't I define myself that way? Ideally, we wouldn't need the DSM. Ideally, we would just be human and everyone would have the right supports and resources from day one. Ideally, we wouldn't use labels at all, but unfortunately, we aren't there yet and we won't be for quite some time. So for now, I guess my thesis of this whole thing is that labeling isn't great, but it's the only way people can get help and resources and to be who they want to be and be their best selves. And if having a diagnosis gives you the freedom to accept yourself and live the way that you want to, then have it. The real problem isn't the labels, it's the stigma. So let's work to fight that instead. Wow, I feel like my uh, educational videos just continue to get deeper and deeper. But anyway, I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, let me know what labels make you you and what you think about all of this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.